The Bible has quite a lot to say about watchmen and what their responsibilities are and the purposes that they fulfilled. We're going to address many of the underlying issues that are creating the challenges that we see in our world today. A lot of people are looking at the world we're living in and they wonder what in the world is going on. And I don't know about you, but it's very easy to look at the world that we're living in and be overwhelmed by it. Has anybody here been overwhelmed lately? I mean, that's just going to the grocery store can be overwhelming these days. But when life becomes overwhelming, oftentimes we want to take the approach of what can I do about it? What in the world can I do about a pandemic that shuts down my business? What can I do about a pandemic that disrupts my church? What can I do about a pandemic that sends my kids home for an extended staycation? What in the world do I do about riots in the streets and civil unrest? What do I do about chaos and crime and corruption? Everywhere you turn, there's things that are so overwhelming, people just seem like the only answer is to give up. And if that's not enough, what do I do about a falling economy? What do I do about a failure in government leadership? What do I do about the evil that's running rampant in the world today? If today you're overwhelmed and you're wondering what you can do, I have good news for you. The problems of the world are not yours to solve. Because Jesus said it this way in John 16 and 33, be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Church, I've come to tell you today that greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. That means our God, the one true God, the awesome God, the God who created heaven and earth, he is the one who has already overcome the world, the flesh, and the devil. He has already conquered death, hell, and the grave. He has already defeated sickness and disease. He has already overwhelmed your sorrow and given you the fullness of joy. He has signed sealed and delivered his promises in covenant with the signature of his only begotten son he has not forsaken his word he has not forgotten his covenant and he will not forsake you give the Lord a hand clap of praise <laughs> Isaiah 62 and verse 6 if you're there say amen. amen the Bible says I have set watchmen on your walls O Jerusalem they shall never hold their peace day or night. You who make mention of the Lord, do not keep silent. Say that again. Do not keep silent and give him no rest until he establishes, until he makes Jerusalem a praise in the earth. Heavenly Father, today let your word ring true in our heart, soul, mind, and body that we recognize who we are and what you have created us to be. Watchmen on the walls who will not keep silent but continually stand upon the righteous truth of your word until every enemy is defeated and your kingdom is established on earth as it is in heaven. It's in Jesus' name that we pray and ask these things and all of God's children said, praise the Lord. You may be seated. In ancient times, walls were the main source of defense around every city and around every village. The Bible says that a man without self-control is like a city without walls. Anything and everything can overtake it. And regardless of how good the walls were, the only way that the walls were truly effective in defending the city is if there were watchmen who were standing on top of those walls. And these watchmen had a purpose. It wasn't just simply to say, hey, somebody's coming. These watchmen had to stay focused on what was afar off. And they had to discern, is it a friend or is it a foe? They had to be able to tell the difference between a caravan that was carrying spices and silk and all types of things for business and trade and understand what an animal looked like when it was loaded down with military weapons and was coming for an evil purpose. They had to have this kind of perception so that whenever they saw trouble coming, they could alert the city that there was something evil headed that way and the city could prepare to defend itself. If they did not and the enemy got too close, then the city would suffer. 
It was a very daunting task to remain vigilant for hours on end in the day and in the night because if the watchmen failed to do their jobs, then their homes, their town, their city, their children, their families were indeed going to suffer the consequences. In our modern world, watchmen are still needed. I believe that the Bible tells us very clearly that we are living in days of evil. The Bible says that you who love the Lord take a stand in the evil day. And this is an evil day. This is a day when darkness has run rampant. But the thing about darkness in the word of God is that it was defeated in Genesis. It was defeated again when Jesus came and he filled a manger. It was defeated when Jesus hung on a cross and declared it is finished. Darkness has been so decimated that the New Testament says that he, Jesus Christ, made a public spectacle of powers and principalities. It literally means he humiliated them when he defeated them at the cross. I believe that God in heaven is looking down on the earth today and the question that he has is the same one that we're asking in this sermon. Where are the watchmen? Where are the vigilant who will not keep silent in a day of evil? Where are those who are watching over their families? Where are those who are watching over their business? Where are those who are watching over their friends? Where are those who are watching over their churches? Where are the watchmen? Parents, God looks at you and your watchmen over your children. Oh, I don't want to invade their privacy. They don't have privacy until they have a mortgage. Where are the watchmen in our pulpits? Where are the preachers in America who are not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, but willing to declare it is still the power of God unto salvation? Where are the watchmen? Isaiah 56 and verse 10, it speaks about watchmen. It says that these watchmen are not like those in Isaiah 62. In Isaiah 56, it says that these watchmen are blind. They can't see evil coming afar off. They can't discern friend from foe. It says these watchmen are not only blind, but they're dumb dogs. They don't bark in a day of evil. It says these watchmen are sleeping. They love slumber instead of being vigilant to do their duty. My concern for this nation is not centered around a lack of political promises. My concern for this nation is not being created by one platform or the other. My concern for this nation is that the pulpits of America are void of the teaching and the preaching of the word of God. Pastors of America, listen to me. We are the watchmen. We are the watchmen. We are the watchmen over our city. We are the watchmen over the families in our churches. We are the watchmen over this nation and the time has come for us to stand and be counted as faithful the time has come for us to be faithful to preach the word in season and out of season it's time to speak the truth whether it's politically correct or not it is time to take a stand in an evil day and refuse to allow this generation to be lost because God didn't put us here to retreat God put us here to live in victory You say, well, I just don't want it to come off too offensive. Let me tell you what would be greatly offensive to let people in your church die and go to hell. That would be offensive. Here on this earth, nothing but the blood of Jesus will conquer the curse of sin. Here on this earth, nothing but the power of his name will overcome every power and principality. Here on this earth, nothing can replace the purpose and the value of preaching God's word without compromise. One of the reasons that the watchmen are silent in our modern day is because oftentimes the enemy has our watchmen divided and distracted. We live in a natural world, but that natural world is under supernatural influence. And the supernatural is always greater than the natural. When you see things happening in the world today, understand that there are two forces that are at war and have been long before you got here. One is light and the other is darkness. 
And so many things right now are being utilized by the kingdom of darkness. Why? So that the watchmen stay silent. Why? Because if Jesus Christ has the name that is above every name, then the only thing that a watchman has to do is say that name and all of hell backs up. So what's the enemy's first strategy against a watchman? Division. Look at how many places division is taking an impact in our society today. Consider what the Bible has to say about unity. Psalms 133, it says, where there is unity, the Lord commands a blessing. He literally sends a blessing that is irrevocable. Deuteronomy chapter 32, it speaks about the exponential power that we gain whenever we are in unity. Deuteronomy 32 and 30, it says, one of us can put a thousand to flight, two of us can put 10,000 when God is on our side. This is what Jesus said in Matthew 18. He said, where two or three of you gather in my name, I am there in the midst. And whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will do it. Say that with me. He will do it. This is why Paul told the New Testament church in Hebrews, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. Consider this. If two or three of us gather and Jesus Christ comes down from heavenly places to be enthroned in the midst of his people, if in his presence is the fullness of joy and at his right hand there's pleasures evermore, then consider how much supernatural power there is in this room when we get together and are united in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Sometimes we get so caught up in the busyness of the day-to-day that we forget to do the simple things in life, such as exchanging a friendly greeting with our neighbors. It is time to be God's love in action, like the Good Samaritan. We are called to love our neighbors as ourselves. Does your life reflect His truth? We are called to be salt and light. Our actions and lifestyles need to reflect the light of Jesus to those around us. We are a living testimony of God's goodness. If we are not shining God's love on those around us, then who will they turn to? This month, with a special gift of any amount to the ministry, we'll send you a special Not By Bread Alone salt box. For your generous gift of $250 or more, we'll also send you a signed copy of Diana Hagee's commemorative cookbook, Not By Bread Alone, accompanied by an apron, cookbook stand, dish towel, and salt box. This set makes a special gift for a loved one. We are called to love our neighbors as ourselves. Call the number on the screen or go to jhm.org bread. The enemy wants us divided in our churches. He wants you divided in your homes. The Bible speaks very clearly about the power of a man and a woman living together in agreement, living together in unity. In the book of Ephesians, it says that the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. In the New Testament, Peter said that whenever you and your wife, you and your husband, you and the spouse that God has given you are praying in agreement, that heaven hears and heaven answers. But when you're praying in disagreement, your prayers hit the ceiling and hit you back in the top of the head. Now that's my translation. But that's what the old English says, your prayers are let. It's like a tennis ball that hits a net and comes back at you. Now understand this about a unity and agreement in marriage. It doesn't mean that both of you see everything exactly alike because that marriage does not exist. Agreement means that you understand your role and your purpose and you honor one another in that role. Agreement means that a godly woman understands it's her husband's responsibility to be the watchman over the household and to lead the household. Agreement means that a godly husband understands that his wife's responsibility is to be the complement, not the competitor to their relationship, and therefore he's going to strive to lead her in a path of righteousness, which makes the husband the watchman over the wife and the wife the watchman over the husband. And this is why we have a trouble with agreement, because we don't agree with our watchman. You pick up that extra donut and she goes, how many of you can interpret the grunts? 
The devil wants you divided in your homes because when you're divided in your homes, he can wreak chaos in your life. He wants our heart divided from our mind. When we pick up the word of God, he wants us to believe that these promises are too confusing. But the truth is these promises are so simple a child can understand them. He wants your heart that hears the word of God to be arguing with your mind every time you receive one of these promises inside your soul. He wants your mind to disqualify it. Do you really think God can bless you? Do you really think God can move mountains? Do you really think God can open up the windows of heaven? Do you really think God can forgive you? He wants you arguing with yourself. And the danger of this kind of division is according to the first chapter of the book of James, it says, he who doubts will receive Nothing. He who doubts will receive nothing. The devil divides us with our pride where we believe that we're better than others. He divides us in our arrogance where we're too stubborn to admit when we're wrong. The reality of our unity is that it's based on our humility. Bible says, humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and he will raise you up. It's time that we had a resurrection of humility in this nation so that God would extend his grace and his mercy towards us. Not only does the enemy want you divided by your pride and your arrogance, he wants you divided by your offenses. How many of you know somebody who's so offended they don't fellowship no more? The Bible calls this the root of bitterness. In Hebrews 12 and 15, it says, Beware of the root of bitterness, because by it many become defiled. Now, the thing you have to understand about roots is that roots grow from seeds, and the seed of offense, if you let it grow in your life, it'll put out a root. And the longer it grows, the stronger it gets. And the stronger it gets, the more you'll infect others with your bitterness. How many of you know people that are so bitter they can irritate you from a mile away? <laughs> this is God's prescription for bitterness. Ephesians 4 and 32, it says, be kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as Christ forgave you. What God is saying is that if God can let go of everything that you did to him, then you can let go of everything they did to you. Not only does the enemy want us divided, but the enemy wants us distracted. When God's kids start to get together and they start to get on the same page and the enemy sees the power of unity starting to work in their prayer life, starting to work in their worship, starting to work in the community, the next thing the enemy does is he wants you distracted. Let me turn their attention from what God wants them to do so that they'll chase everything else in this life. Where are the watchmen in our homes? In this modern world, oftentimes, fathers get distracted by the business. Mothers get distracted by their lives. Children are left alone. You have to understand, God didn't call you to be a great businessman. He called you to be the father of those children. The enemy will distract you, not just with the things of this world, but he'll distract you with your own flesh. The Bible says, give no place to the devil. Say that with me. Give no place to the devil. What does that mean? That means do not show him your weakness. Why? Because he'll exploit it. One of the things that we often do in our sainthood is we look at the behaviors of others and we immediately think, well, I'm not nearly as bad as that guy. Now, I may not be talking about you, but I know you know somebody who acts that way from time to time. And Jesus said it this way, judge not, lest ye be judged. Meaning that there will always be a higher court that can look down upon our behavior and recognize what we do wrong. Here's how James said it. Each is tempted when he's drawn into his own desire and enticed. That means that the devil is watching and he's waiting to see what you cast longing eyes at. 
And the second he sees it, he'll take his time and tailor make you a suit of temptation and hold the coat out for you to put on and say, it fits just right. Each one is tempted when he's drawn into his own desires and enticed. Don't let the devil use your flesh to distract you. Isaiah 62, 6 and 7, it speaks about watchmen, but it gives us a very clear instruction that these watchmen are different than those who are looking out for danger and hollering about what's coming this way. Read the verses carefully. It says that these watchmen are not going to keep silent, but day and night, they are not going to give him rest. Who is he? God. Day and night, they are going to intercede and petition heaven and remind the Lord what his promise is here on the earth. Day and night, they're going to go into heavenly places and say, Father, this is what you said you were going to do for your children here on earth, and we are absolutely requesting that you honor that right now. Day and night, they're going to go before the throne of God. Day and night, they're going to be praying over their children. Day and night, they're going to be praying over their city. Day and night, they're going to be praying over their nation. Day and night, they're going to stay at it until God says, listen, I can't put up with it. I'm going to do it. Here's God's promise of victory in our lives. Romans 16 and 20, it says, And the God of peace will soon crush Satan underneath your feet. He didn't say he was going to disrupt the devil. He said, I'm going to crush him. And in doing so, I want you to be a part of it. I'm going to crush him underneath your feet. Child of God, you are a watchman. God is for you. He's not against you. No weapon formed shall prosper. You have the victory through Christ the Lord. You say, well, pastor, the Lord's never spoken to me from a burning bush. Oh, yes, he has, because the Bible says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word became flesh, and it dwelt among us. Who was speaking from the burning bush? He told Moses, I am. And when you open up this book, you find the great I am. He said, I am a healer. I am a way maker. I am a chain breaker. I am the God who has set you free. I am the first, and I am the last. I am he who was and he who is and he who is to come. Child of God, you have all the power. You have all the authority. You have all that you need because God has given it to you in the mighty name of Jesus. So when the enemy comes in like a flood, crush him in Jesus' name. When he comes against your finances, crush him in Jesus' name. When he comes against your marriage, crush him in Jesus' name. Declare the word of the Lord that my God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory. Declare the word of the Lord that as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Declare the word of the Lord and say, let God arise and let his enemies be scattered. Give the Lord a shout of praise. Can we stand as we draw this service to a close? Now, as a watchman over this church, I can solicit heaven on your behalf, but you as a watchman over your own life, over your own family, over your own business, you know where the enemy is attacking you right now. And I don't want you to outsource your success. I want you to participate in it. So I'm going to solicit heaven. I'm going to go before the throne of God on your behalf. But I want you in agreement to do the same thing with me. I'm going to pray generally, but you pray specifically. You pray specifically for that need. You pray specifically for the business. You pray specifically for your lost loved ones. You pray specifically for that physical healing. You pray so that heaven hears and understands that you are a watchman, that day and night, day and night, day and night, day and night, you're not going to give up until God rains down the victory that he's promised you. I want you to do it now. Just lift your hands and begin to speak to the Lord. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, 
in the name that is above every name. We come before you as a congregation of believers bought by the blood of our Savior, your Son, who has set us free. We come before you knowing that the mighty name of Jesus can indeed overcome every obstacle, every barrier, every burden, every yoke of bondage. We come in that name because it's that name that gives us healing from sickness and disease. It's that name that gives us power to receive the provisions of heaven. It's that name that causes every principality to back up. It's that name that sends every demon fleeing. So in Jesus' name I'm speaking to families in this room today and I'm speaking restoration and I'm speaking unity and I'm speaking joy and I'm speaking confidence. In Jesus' name I'm speaking to businessmen here today and I'm asking God to open up the windows of heaven and pour out blessings they cannot contain. I'm asking you to restore and rebuild. I'm asking you to overcome and overwhelm with your goodness, your loving kindness, your blessings, and your mercy. In Jesus' name, I'm speaking to hearts and minds and lives today that they would recognize the power that they possess as blood-bought children of the King that no weapon formed against them would prosper, that no plan of the enemy shall come to pass, that they have victory because Christ is Lord and we have been given all that we need in Jesus' name. Child of God, shout hallelujah for the joy of the Lord. Lord is your strength. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Jesus died to give you eternal life and victory over whatever obstacle you are facing today. We're celebrating his sacrifice by giving thanks for a Savior who is alive and sits at the right hand of God the Father. This message of truth is broadcast around the world thanks to your faithful support of this ministry. We celebrate that the stone has been rolled away, the tomb is empty, and we can put our trust in this fact. Jesus Christ is risen. Sign up for a week of full devotions led by Pastor Matt Hagee from the land of Israel. Twice each day during the week, you receive a video devotional that will refresh your spirit and strengthen your faith. Sign up by going to jhm.org slash holyweek. Then look forward to receiving your first devotional on Sunday, March 24th. Let's experience Christ's journey to His resurrection together. Sometimes we get so caught up in the busyness of the day-to-day -day that we forget to do the simple things in life, such as exchanging a friendly greeting with our neighbors. This month, with a special gift of any amount, we'll send you a special Not By Bread Alone salt box. For your generous gift of $250 or more, we'll also send you a signed copy of Diana Hagee's commemorative cookbook, Not By Bread Alone, accompanied by an apron, cookbook stand, dish towel, and salt box. Call the number on the screen or go to jhm.org slash bread. You've been watching Hagee Ministries. If you need prayer, call our prayer line or visit our website. Be blessed and join us tomorrow.